me ask you guys something here. For those of us who are a little bit older, let's go back. Let's go back 20, 25 years. And let's say Apple makes a landline phone and they're doing the same things with the iPhone that they do with a landline phone. Like if if I call my grandmother and she has a non-Apple phone, but I have an Apple landline phone and she has, let's say, a, a, a AT&T phone, right? And my phone calls don't go as clear as they should, or they're not as higher quality as they should. Would that be considered a problem? Of course, it would be considered a problem. Would it be justified that that comp that Apple is now being sued for making it so that their phones don't operate and interact with other phones as well? I would say that's fair. Most likely because if they're not operating as well, that means it's because they're choking the means of communication between from person to person. Listen, no boys don't mean to bust your bubble, but the corporations of the world are nothing but trouble. So the next time a corporation tries to give you the play, just remember my rhymes, and get the hell away. <laughs> so, yes, there is this happening. Uh, let me share this with you guys. Because I was just like, what? What is going on with Apple? Apple apparently is being sued by the United States government. I'm kind of surprised. So we'll get into that in a second. But uh, this seems kind of like a bit of a fluff piece, but I think it's important to get some of this information as well. This is from More Perfect Union, and they have Five Shakir. Yes, you you guys know, remember that name. Uh, he was a part of Justice Democrats back in the day. I guess he's working with More Perfect Union now. But, you know, never mind him. Let's talk about the information that this video provides and we'll get into it right now some of the biggest companies in america hate what is going on in this building for reasons that most of the public are completely unaware of i came here to the united states department of justice to talk about a specific 800 person unit that works in that building it's called the antitrust division headed by a man named jonathan Cantor. if you look at the headlines about jonathan Cantor's work you will see on a daily basis. Wall Street is angry with Jonathan Cantor. They've never seen a regulator like this. Though. They've never seen anyone like that. Angry with the antitrust enforcement actions that are going on in the Biden administration. I think if you're Google in particular, I, I would kind of be shaking in my boots. Why? Why do you think corporate America is so scared? I hate a Biden place for free. That's a dangerous thing. So upset with what's going on here in this building behind me. We're going to talk about that. Are they shaking in their boots, though? I'm... We're talking about Biden's Justice Department. I'm not necessarily shaking in my boots because what did Joe Biden say originally? I'm a capitalist. They're not really shaking in their boots. At least not to me. Anywho. Let's continue. One of the reasons I was most excited to talk to you, Jonathan, is because of your job, an interesting and exclusive perspective on America's economy. You look at a whole host of industries across the board. You think of shipping and rail, private equity, healthcare, banks, uh, ticket vendors, you know, all kinds of things that you uniquely have perspective on. Do you sense an economy that's getting more complicated for the regular person to navigate? Absolutely. We hear about it every day. We hear from consumers who are increasingly finding it impenetrable. Companies should be out there innovating to make things easier, not harder. Healthcare should be about delivering the best possible outcome to a patient, not about 
um, a faceless intermediary. The companies make it harder because they want to maximize profits. I, I mean, isn't that the goal of these corporations? Within the capitalist system, that's the goal of the corporations. In fact, the CEOs have a fiduciary responsibility to maximize the profits for the shareholders, typically within a capitalist system. What is so different? Like what? Here's my question. Why are these two surprised that tappies are going to cap? It doesn't. Baby, let me tell you, this is, this is, oof, this is headache inducing. All right, let's continue. Increasingly, we're seeing these, you know, the rise of intermediaries, platforms, multi-sided markets, things that um, sit between the person who makes something and the person who buys something the person who offers a service and the person who consumes that service. One of the most important cases that Jonathan is bringing involves this company called Agristats. Agristats is one of these many middlemen in today's economy. They don't produce anything. They're a data warehouse. They find a price point, a price point that works for the profit maximization of the largest meat producers while keeping the farmers take as low as possible. More money is being gobbled up by those intermediaries. If you look at a lot of, not all of them, but if you look at a lot of our cases, they're focused on those intermediaries and making sure that they are not becoming choke points in our economy, that they are not becoming facilitators of more money being sucked out of the middle and less going to the people who actually make and build, deliver things and the people who buy and consume uh, and enjoy things. For many. So you can think of intermediaries as, look, I look at health, uh, at private healthcare as an intermediary because they're literally making healthcare decisions for people instead of it being done by your doctor. They're determining how your health is, how, your health outcomes instead of your doctor doing it based on these insurance people who are working in the background that's saying, oh, well, uh, according to this paper, you don't need this when in reality, the doctor's saying, no, I, I need this test or I need this thing done. Because the doctor is actually seeing you, not the insurance company seeing you. The insurance company doesn't have your vitals. The insurance company does not have your test results. And even if they do, are they? do they actually have the medical expertise to tell what should and shouldn't be done? Are insurance companies really in the business of diagnosing and treating patients? No. So therefore they should not be there in the first place. I'm gonna be, look, as radical as y'all may think I am, I'm gonna say this, insurance companies, private insurance companies do not deserve to exist. No, they don't deserve to exist. I do not want somebody between me and my doctor. It should be my doctor and me making these decisions, not a health insurance. This is why I say we need a full nationalization of our healthcare system. There should not be healthcare companies anymore. In fact, if we were to have a nationalized healthcare system, we would not even need Medicare anymore because it's all being taken care of health wise in the system. There wouldn't be a need to pay anybody uh, through a insurance system insurance for what but yes there are many intermediaries many consumers or people are wondering why they're paying higher prices for x thing it feels or seems just reading from your complaints about some of these issues that it is the role of data being uh, transacted by these middlemen that is playing an inordinate role is that fair absolutely so um the the asymmetry of power, the imbalance um, is made, is amplified by data and it will be continually amplified by uh, things like AI where machines can more perfectly and more, um, and more quickly figure out how to charge you more or how to um, keep you from going to a competitor that charges less. I thought, wait, I thought that Capitalism breeds innovation. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's innovation for the capitalists, not for you. See, that's the thing they leave out. 
they always leave out oh capitalism it, it breeds innovation for the owners it doesn't breed innovation for the consumer it doesn't breed innovation for you it just breeds innovation for to help them make more money and to squeeze you even more drier than you already are ah do you get it now how to extract more from you um, and avoid competition. Mm -hmm. This issue of algorithmic price fixing that Jonathan's talking about is critically important. One of his major lawsuits that he's brought involves this Texas-based company called RealPage. A ProPublica investigation of RealPage found that it is using software to inflate rents that people are paying all across America. Your housing prices are going up because of an algorithm that's telling landlords that they can get more money out of you. Oh, see, that's the innovation that we were talking about. The innovation to squeeze more money out of you. So then if you cannot pay it, then you wind up homeless. Markets that involve data are more likely to um, tip to one player uh, and result in more centralized choke point economy. That's a problem. One of the things I'm learning from you in this conversation is that the future of quote unquote price may be less static. That what we're seeing through algorithms and the transaction of data is if you walked up virtually to a cereal box now, that price is rotating and moving on you because I, it's gauging who you are, what your consumption habits are, how much money you might have to spend, and literally changing it on you. And those prices aren't just moving on the consumer, they're moving on everybody in the supply chain. I talk about how people used to con transact business. And it used to be people, uh, our cases in the antitrust world involved um, smoke-filled rooms where people would you know, shake hands and agree to fix prices. Well, the new theater for that kind of conduct is going to be giving information to um, a, uh, a robot, to AI, that steps in and does that same thing, but can do it faster, it can do it more precisely, uh, and it can do it in a way that's more insidious and nefarious. And so it's really important that we say, okay, just because it's a one and a zero, it's just because it's being done by a machine instead of a person, doesn't make it any less problematic. In some ways, it makes it worse. How much does the consideration of the laborer in today's economy factor into how you think about the cases that you bring? This is essential. There's one case that we're very proud of where we, it was a private case, but where we took an important role um, in arguing uh, for a precedent. And this was a woman, a hardworking woman at a McDonald's, and she wanted the opportunity to get a managerial position. She couldn't get it at her current establishment, so she uh, interviewed and got an offer to be a manager at a different franchise. And so this was the path we're dropping mobility. You go from being a fry cook to being a manager. Well, there was a non-compete agreement that said she couldn't take the job at the other fast food establishment, even though that job was not available where she currently worked. And she had the courage to sue. And we went to court and said, she is right. A non-compete agreement that keeps a hardworking woman from having the opportunity to earn more money, not by putting a handout, but earn more money by working harder, by succeeding and getting an offer to be a manager. That's exactly what we should be protecting. Now, never mind the fact that you said not giving her a handout, but it's whatever. That just goes to show how the system itself is geared to pushing people into a, a space where their profits are the profits are maximized by squeezing people as much dry as they possibly can. So let me share this as well. So let's get into it. So this is Merrick Garland talking about suing Apple. So if I can get this. Okay. All right. 
Let's go. It's going to be laying out this case against Apple. Uh, let's go to that. Line. Good morning. Earlier today, the Department of Justice, joined by 15 states and the District of Columbia, sued Apple in the U.S. District Court for the District of New Jersey for violating Section 2 of the Sherman Antitrust Act. Over the last two decades, Apple has become one of the most valuable public companies in the world. Today, its net income exceeds the individual gross domestic product of more than 100 countries. That is in large part due to the success of the iPhone, Apple's signature smartphone product. For over a decade, iPhone sales have made up a majority of Apple's annual revenue. Today, Apple's share of the U.S. performance smartphone market exceeds 70%, and its share of the entire U.S. smartphone market exceeds 65%. Apple charges as much as nearly $1,600 for an iPhone. But as our complaint alleges, Apple has maintained monopoly power in the smartphone market, not simply by staying ahead of the competition on the merits, but by violating federal antitrust law. Consumers should not have to pay higher prices because companies break the law. First of all, y'all paying $1,600 for a phone? All right. Look, $150. This was, I got this what? Three, four years ago? at least and that was because i absolutely needed it not because i just wanted to upgrade 150 dollars. you got people paying 10 times that just for an iphone how much you want to bet i could do just as much as all the stuff i can do on this one with it than you can do with an iphone uh. <sighs> Boy, I'm telling you, man, they're really trying to squeeze people dry based on vibes. It's crazy. We allege that Apple has employed a strategy that relies on exclusionary anti-competitive conduct that hurts both consumers and developers. For consumers, that has meant fewer choices, higher prices and fees, lower quality smartphones, apps and accessories, and less innovation from Apple and its competitors. For developers, that has meant being forced to play by rules that insulate Apple from competition. And as outlined in our complaint, we allege that Apple has consolidated its monopoly power, not by making its own products better, but by making other products worse. That is what capitalism does. It's never about making things better for the consumer. It's about making things better for the shareholders. Apple will continuously make things worse. I cannot tell you how many Apple users I have encountered where they say that they try to avoid the iOS updates as much as possible because their phone always works worse after an update. How many of you have Apple phones in the chat? How many of you have experience and update and then your phone starts working worse afterwards. Go ahead, let me know. Sean Miller says iPhone costs about a dollar thirty six to no, no, it's not a dollar thirty six to make. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me it's a dollar thirty six to make. You mean to tell me that they are upcharging people by over a thousand percent? No, that can't be. That's crazy. Oh my God. Oh my stars and stripes. You said in parts, not labor. Okay, yeah, but still. You mean to tell me that with parts and labor, an iPhone could probably cost about $30 to make? Mm -mm -mm. Wow. 
I got no iPhone now. Apple carries out its exclusionary anti-competitive conduct in two principal ways. First, Apple imposes contractual restrictions and fees that limit the features and functionality that developers can offer iPhone users. Second, Apple selectively restricts access to the points of connection between third-party apps and the iPhone's operating system, degrading the functionality of non-Apple apps and accessories. As a result, for most of the past 15 years, Apple has collected a tax in the form of a 30% commission on the price of any app downloaded from the App Store, as well as on in-app purchases. Apple is able to command these fees from companies of all sizes. Apple has also suppressed the emergence of programs like cloud streaming apps, including gaming apps, as well as super apps that could reduce user dependence on Apple's own operating system and expensive hardware. And as any iPhone user who has ever seen a green text message or received a tiny grainy video can attest, Apple's anti-competitive conduct also includes making it more difficult for iPhone users to message with users of non-Apple products. It I'm gonna be real with you. I've had I've had friends who have Apple phones that tried to send me video, and next thing you know, it's small, tiny, and grainy. And I'm just like, why can't I see this? And all because they have an Apple phone and I have an Android. But let a friend that has an Android send me a video. It's perfect. Lou says, as an Apple user, this is absolutely true. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Grant says, let's not forget how the U.S. is trying to stop Huawei phones from gaining foothold in the West. I used to have a Huawei way back in the day. I used to have one. But yeah, they don't like the Chinese have uh, probably better quality phones now. Does this by diminishing the functionality of its own messaging app and by diminishing the functionality of third party messaging apps. By doing so, Apple knowingly and deliberately degrades quality, privacy and security for its users. For example, if an iPhone user messages a non iPhone user in Apple messages, the text appears not only as a green bubble, but incorporates limited functionality. The conversation is not encrypted, videos are pixelated and grainy, and users cannot edit messages or see typing indicators. As a result, iPhone users perceive rival smartphones as being lower quality because the experience of messaging friends and family who do not own iPhones is worse, even though Apple is the one responsible for breaking cross-platform messaging. And by the way, how many times have people said that Apple is actually behind Android when it comes to innovation of their phones? Like there's a lot of people who have Androids that will, they will have things like a one, two, three years ahead of Apple. And then Apple will come out and say, oh, we have this feature and Android has been ha had that feature for like two, three years already. And it's like, Android uses like, where y'all where y'all been? Goodness gracious. And it does so intentionally. For example, in 2013, a senior executive at Apple explained that supporting cross-platform messaging in Apple messages, quote, would simply serve to remove an obstacle to iPhone families giving their kids Android phones, close quote. In 2022, Apple's CEO was asked whether Apple would fix iPhone to Android messaging. The questionnaire added, quote, not to make it personal, but I can't send my mom certain videos, close quote. Apple's CEO responded, buy your mom an iPhone. In addition to selectively controlling app distribution and creation, 
we allege that Apple is violating the law by conditionally restricting developers' access to the interface, which is needed to make an app functional on the Apple operating system. Let me ask you guys something here. For those of us who are a little bit older, let's go back, let's go back 20, 25 years. And let's say Apple makes a landline phone and they're doing the same things with the iPhone that they do with a landline phone. Like if, if I call my grandmother and she has a non-Apple phone, but I have an Apple landline phone and she has, let's say, a, a, a AT&T phone, right? And my phone calls don't go as clear as they should, or they're not as high quality as they should. Would that be considered a problem? Of course, it would be considered a problem. Would it be justified that that comp that Apple is now being sued for making it so that their phones don't operate and interact with other phones as well. I would say that's fair. Most likely because if they're not operating as well, that means it's because they're choking the means of communication between from person to person. And so if you're choking the means of communication from person to person, even if it's text messages, you're making it so that it's just lower quality. And you're trying to force them to buy your product when in reality, if your product's better, then why are you sabotaging other people? Capitalism is the worst, man. For a product like a smartwatch or a digital wallet to be useful to an iPhone user, it must be able to communicate with the iPhone's operating system. But Apple creates barriers that make it extremely difficult and expensive for both users and developers to venture outside the Apple ecosystem. When it comes to smartwatches, Apple not only drives users to purchase an Apple Watch, which is only compatible with an iPhone, it also uses its technical and contractual controls to make it harder for someone with an iPhone to use a non-Apple smartwatch. And when it comes to digital wallets, Apple's exclusionary conduct goes a step further. Digital wallets allow users to store and use passes and credentials in a single app, including credit cards, personal identification, movie tickets, and car keys. Apple Wallet is Apple's proprietary digital wallet on the iPhone. Apple actively encourages banks, merchants, and other parties to participate in Apple Wallet, but it simultaneously exerts its monopoly power to block these same partners from developing alternative payment products and services for iPhone users. For example, Apple has blocked third-party developers from creating competing digital wallets on the iPhone that use what is known as tap-to-pay functionality. That is the function that makes a digital wallet, well, a wallet. Instead, Apple forces those who want to use the wallet function to share personal information with Apple, even if they would prefer to share that information solely with their bank, medical provider, or other trusted third party. When an iPhone user puts a credit or debit card in an Apple wallet, Apple inserts itself into the process that would otherwise occur directly between the user and the card issuer. Yeah, that's capitalism. This introduces an additional potential point of failure for the privacy and security of Apple users. And that is just one way in which Apple is willing to make the iPhone less secure and less private in order to maintain its monopoly power. 
The Supreme Court defines monopoly power as, quote, the power to control prices or exclude competition. As set out in our complaint, Apple has that power in the smartphone market. Now, having monopoly does not itself violate the antitrust laws, but it does when a firm acquires or maintains monopoly power, not because it has a superior product or superior business acumen, but by engaging in exclusionary conduct. As set out in our complaint, Apple has maintained its power, not because of its superiority, because of its unlawful exclusionary behavior. So this is basically how capitalism um, operates, is that it will create monopolies. It's not a innovation it is really a stifling of competition in order for it to stay on top. Once it does that, then it will try to eke out the rest of the competition or make it so that it's much harder for people to interact with the other competition. And then you have no choice but to use their product or service. And then a lot of times what ends up happening is the quality of the product or service ends up diminishing, but you have no choice but to use them. Isn't that what happened with Amazon, right? Walmart, like Walmart was everywhere. And now look, now that Walmart is everywhere and that everybody uses Walmart, now Walmart puts you to work by checking out your own stuff. Walmart puts you to work by making sure that our federal dollars go to pay for their workers to have food stamps instead of them actually paying their workers a living wage. That's how these companies operate because they don't actually want to pay their employees. It's all exploitative. Monopolies like Apple's threaten the free and fair markets upon which our economy is based. They stifle innovation. They hurt producers and workers and they increase costs for consumers. Merit, 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 merit. <laughs> Come on, bro. That's how capitalism operates. Like, it, it's, you know what's crazy? You got a lot of people who like Merrick Garland that go, oh my gosh, yeah, this is horrible. This is this is how it shouldn't be. This is why we have these, these uh, measurements in place because they shouldn't be doing this. But that's, that's like, that's like giving a kid, that's like giving a baby food and not expecting it to poop. Like, if you give it food, it's going to poop. That's like, that's like a male and female having relations and then she gets pregnant and then a baby comes out nine months later. It's like one plus one equals two. That's how capitalism operates, baby. What in the world? Uh, is, I can't believe this is happening. You can't believe it's happening. What? Y'all. Is this our attorney general? Is this the guy that they, that Biden wanted to make? Wait, no, no, not Biden. Is this the guy that, that, I think Obama wanted to make him a Supreme Court justice. Jeez Louise. If left unchallenged, Apple will only continue to strengthen its smartphone monopoly. But there's a law for that. The Justice Department will vigorously enforce antitrust law. Enforcing the law protects consumers from higher prices and fewer choices. That is the Justice Department's legal obligation. That is what the American people expect. That is what they deserve. I am grateful to the attorneys and staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Mm. Oh my gosh. Let me share this with y'all. Apple is just a horrible company, man. You can get your hands on the newest model with basically no new features except the one Apple was legally forced into. That's right, besides the USB-C port, the iPhone 15 seems to be yet another upgrade that barely changes anything. As soon as it was announced, people everywhere were once again underwhelmed, bored, and frustrated. Do you understand what I mean here? I need to provide some context. You see, the iPhone, as we all know, has the largest market share across the world. In the USA, smartphones are released almost every year. But in the early days, every new iPhone used to be something special. And we are calling it iPhone. Today, today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. A big upgrade from the previous ones, which used to be very innovative and exciting. But as time progressed, Apple switched their focus from innovation to simply sales. The new iPhone 15 is pretty much the same. Just like every other year, the iPhone 15 has another camera upgrade, a new dynamic island, previously exclusive to premium iPhone 14 models, and an OLED Super Retina screen compatible with Dolby Vision content. That's it. But it's not really the phone Apple's betting on. They're far more focused on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And the iPhone 15 Pro Max has one of the best cameras in Apple's history, with a periscope zoom lens that bumps the optical zoom from three times to five times. All for the extra price of a total of $1,200. But once you look past most of the noise, you'll quickly realize that once again, there's nothing really new. A better camera, sure, some cool extra add-ons, but nothing game-changing or meaningful. And yet, according to reports, more than 250 million iPhones haven't been upgraded in the last four years, which means more and more people are desperate to change their smartphones and switch to a newer experience. And Apple CEO Tim Cook believes that the iPhone 15 line will be that legendary series that will break Apple's sales record because of it. They come out with a new model every single time, and then that new model is nothing different than the old model. So how does capitalism breed innovation? I... Let's continue. When top-heavy companies like this hold so much influence over the US's economy, bad news drops can erase billions in value in mere minutes. And after the last couple of weeks, the economy still looks like a house of cards. I may just be overreacting. My life was stressful enough without financial volatility. And clearly you guys feel the same, which is why you've been flocking to a potential safe haven asset with the help of our sponsors at Masterworks. Over 800,000 people have joined the platform to get access to offerings featuring legendary artists like Picasso, Monet, and Banksy. While the median stock on the S&P 500 is returning just 5% this year, public auction info shows work similar to their new Basquiat offering appreciated in value by over 22% from 2006 to 2022. So it's easy to see why offerings have sold out within minutes. And since so many of you guys have created accounts, the rest of you still have the chance to skip the waitlist and start your collection today. Just make sure you click the link in the description below. In fact, all the technology gurus are predicting that the iPhone 15 will be one of the most important iPhones in history. Even though when you actually look at it, the iPhone 15 isn't revolutionary or legendary. It's just really nothing. The look of the iPhone 15 is insanely similar to the iPhone 14. Apple stopped innovating a long time ago, and now they just think about all the new ways they can sell a bad product to the masses. Yet people buy them. Why is that? Well, of course, Apple has a reputation of being the most revolutionary tech company in the world, providing an unmatched experience. That's why an average American will spend a big chunk 
with their paycheck on buying the latest iPhone while neglecting other areas of their life because they don't want to look different from the crowd and society. Fear of missing out is the number one focus factor in modern marketing, and Apple is best when it comes to installing FOMO in people. Their marketing advertisements and slogans will reflect a message to people that if you don't have the latest iPhone, you are a boomer who's not keeping up with the modern world. Seeing how fast technology and times are changing, everyone wants to keep up with all the latest technology and latest trends, but they fail to see that the iPhone they're investing their money in is the same as the one they already own. If you guys don't remember, um, was it Sunday evening? I was actually reading uh, Laziness Does Not Exist, right? And I was reading chapter seven, and one of the things it talks about uh, shrugging off society's shoulds. And one of the things that a lot of people are talking about is talking about comparing your life to other people, right? And a lot of times outside of the compar comparison, comparison of your life to people on Instagram or Facebook or what have you, it's also when you're out in real life and you see somebody with the latest iPhone, like, oh my gosh, I got the newest iPhone. Does it really improve their lives? Has it really been a something that really like enriches their life by having the latest iPhone? No. But what does Apple do? They go, Well, if you're if you don't have the latest iPhone, you're just gonna get left out. Left out of what though? Left out of what? Bad iOS updates? Getting charged extra just because I have, I can say I have the Apple? Is that what it is? Like, come on now. Oh, jeez. Just because its name is a little bit different and Tim Cook has dubbed it the best ever. People lose their critical thinking and buy them without hesitation. The only change we've seen in the iPhone 15 is the charging port, which is a USB-C type from now on. And this decision is not Apple's own thinking, but something they've been forced to do. You see, the EU has made its guidelines clear that they want Apple to use USB type charging from now on, otherwise Apple will be banned from the European Union, which Apple can't even think of in their wildest nightmares. Losing Europe will be the biggest loss for Apple, and that's why they're letting go of their maverick nature of looking different from everyone else, and switching to USB-C. But that's not all because the European Union is going to force some major decisions on smartphone companies in the future. In 2023, hang on, let me go back to this. So basically, they're like, oh, well, we have this new charging, yeah, this new charging port. Even though it was forced on them, they're like, oh, we got this new charger. Are you kidding me right now? That's not innovation. You're just catching up with everybody else because we all have the same charger now. So you don't have to buy one charger different than another. I remember when I was working at the electronics department back in Sears, you know, a few years ago. And one of the things that we had was there were all these different types of chargers. There were, and then if you had an Apple phone, you could not use an Android charger. Though with Androids, you can use a couple of different chargers for diff interchanging with different phones. Now, anybody that got an Android, as long as you got an Android, you got the right charger for your phone. It doesn't matter if it's a Motorola. It doesn't matter if it's a Samsung. It doesn't matter if, if it's a, oh, what's, a, what's another phone company name? Phone manufacturer. Um. Which the HTC, I think it is. There, there are other ones, right? But if it's a if it's an Android, you have the right charger. It doesn't matter the brand of the phone. But if you had an Apple, oh no, you you need to find somebody else who had an iPhone if your battery was about to go dead. But now Europe's like, no, 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 no. You have to have all chargers need to be universal now. Because here's the thing. 
That's like, that's like you having a product and that's like having a phone with a phone jack and it's a different phone jack for your phone versus everybody else. It doesn't make sense, right? Or it's like having a plug that's that's built a different way. Well, you guys got to install this different type of plug in your wallet in order to use our product. The hell? No, I want my two prongs, baby. That's it. That's all. You don't need to. All because they want to keep you within that ecosystem. It is crazy on its face. I'm not going to watch that entire video, but it's wild. But let me ask you this. Is Apple, are they going to be affected negatively? Is it going to be a significant effect on them by being sued by the Justice Department? Something tells me no. Because they, it's Apple. Now, we always do this. Let's go to follow the money. Let's see who owns what. This is Apple. And you guys already know who owns 8.54% of Apple. At the top is Vanguard. Next, at 6.75% is BlackRock. Then Berkshire Hathaway. Then State Street. Then Geo, then FMR. Look, is it any surprise of who owns the biggest shares in Apple? So yeah, Apple's being sued, but I don't honestly think. I just, I just don't. While I am, while that's also, let me see. You're just acting a little wonky today. I want to share with you guys. Sorry, guys. Internet went out. Oh, gosh. So let me share with you guys the results of the poll. You know, I'm at, I'm of this opinion that what we need is a product that is modular where we can just repair pieces of it or replace it with pieces. And like, for instance, they said in that video of just having replaceable batteries, like we had that years ago. Like, ain't nothing changed. Like, why are we, why is that new and novel when we had it when we first started having smartphones? Like, like I can't replace the battery even in my phone. It's crazy. All right. All right. So. Let me enlarge this just so that, ooh, come on, there we go. There we go, 
All right, so let me share the screen. All right, so out of 51 votes, do you think the lawsuit would affect Apple, Apple significantly? 16% says yes, this will change Apple. No, 41% says no, this will not or barely change. And then 43% said not sure. I appreciate the honesty with everybody. I, I'm of the opinion, no, this will barely change. But I think that a lot of people are saying, oh my God, I can't believe this is actually happening. And it's like, it's an election year. Of course, they're gonna go after the big player during an election year to make it seem like, oh my goodness, well, my justice department went against Apple. Yeah, but you could have went after them last year. You could have went after them the year before. You could have went after them in 2020. You chose not to. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. More head kisses and have a beautiful day.